I learned from. Um, he epitomizes what I think about in terms of the next generation of digital disruptor. And Ramesh is going to share with you just you know, his journey, his thoughts, and some of the things that he's been doing as a practitioner in a real business um, around digital transformation. So, Ramesh, with great pleasure. Thanks for the folks from CA to, uh, to have me here again. Uh, this is my second year uh, that I've got an opportunity to uh, say a few things about what we are doing in Singpost. And I'm also always uh, happy to come back to you know, this place. As you know, this used to be the, uh, the general post office for a very, very long time, this hotel before this, right? So it's a shame that we still don't own this property. Um, I think a lot of things were said uh, this morning, uh, very interesting. And you know, again, I, I kind of so many thoughts uh, you know, running in my mind. Maybe I wanted to share a couple of minutes of that before we, uh, you know, go into my specific presentation. I think, you know, I mean, I started as a programmer, right? So start as a programmer in the mainframe world. Uh, you know, many of the concepts uh, which uh, Steven spoke about, we did try uh, in the late 1980s, late 1990s. Okay, uh, you know, I mean. Uh, Place where I used to work, uh, they used to provision an mainframe environment for a region in actually three hours. Okay, that's what you need to do. You send a fax by 12, my good friend in the data center will ensure that by 3 o'clock it is out of running. So then when people suddenly said that, uh, you know, you can do provisioning in one day, I was thinking, oh, actually, the mainframe world I used to do it in three hours. So I tried my job wrong. A lot of people said that, uh, you know, um, data analytics, you know, we can, we can, we can do. Get a lot of data, crunch data, you know, tell tell uh, you know a lot of outcomes. But if you really look at the credit bureaus in the United States, right, it actually gives a score for every single individual in the country. Now every country you get a you get a bureau score. Right? So that means someone was doing at that level of taking every single transaction present in the country and come up with a score and give it to you. So so was that not big data? I'm not sure. So if you really look at the number of concepts existed before, but I think what has happened in the last five years is I think the hardware industry has done a great job in reducing the cost of hardware. I think I think that is that is in my view one of the key steps which allows us to do a lot of things because those those days we did, but they were very expensive. That's number one. Second, I think mobile has completely changed the way we look at things. So if, you know, you're in your hand, you can access it anytime you want. And if you put these two things together, right, the cost of production cost of hardware, and, you know, the whole thing of mobility, I think we are entering into a different world, but then we're creating a problem for ourselves, because I think there is no argument that the software is going to, uh, uh, you know, rule for the next few years, and it was actually ruling for the last many years, but then we are also having huge resource issues, there are not a number of, you don't have a number of programmers who are passing out of universities, then my question is always, who's going to maintain it, who's going to change it, and how do we solve that? problem of not having enough resource, right? I mean, uh, I used to live in KL for five years, uh, which was very interesting. The least preferred by students was to actually get into a computer science degree. And that's, that's and the trend is actually following in many countries where people actually don't want to get into programming, right? So if you put all of these students together, we're really entering a, a fascinating world where it's going to be a lot of challenges and changes every two years, right? So that's more, of, you know, I wanted to just say this because of you know, all the all the before presentations because you know the change is constant and how do we embrace it? Right? Let, let me come to come to sing post. Okay, uh, one uh, actually the, the, the first phase of transformation is kind of over for us, and we will never use the word digital transformation for us. It's transformation. Whether it's digital, non-digital, it's different. I think people have to contextualize it because I don't think uh, you know there is there is anything uh, something or uh, there is there is nothing new in the way transformation happens because the tools available, because of the concepts which are coming up, people are doing it in a different way, right? But the transformation is still very fundamental. So what I'm going to uh, go through the next uh, few slides is what are we doing with drones? I think there are a lot of discussion on drones. A uh, number of people have tried and I don't think we were the first one to, uh, who might be, you know, to argue we were the first postal company to do uh, on, on a, on a real-time basis. Uh, so now how does, how does it going to change the world? So the few thoughts around how we really look at drones is what I wanted to go through this presentation. Um, okay. So, so there are three things, right? So the project was called as uh, uh, Syncost Alpha. 
uh, then, then, then the whole question is when do we commercialize it? I think that's the question everyone asks me, right? Okay, you've done your test, you've done this, but is it is it going to be uh, is it is it going to be really possible that the drones will will rule the world? Right? Uh, we don't know yet. We feel there is a great use case for it. We need to see how that whole thing really changes. Okay, uh, in sync post again, you know, the, the key thing is uh, how the vision changes, right? I mean, postal companies are, I mean, I think pretty much uh, been in existence for years and years, right? 100 years, 150 years. In most of the countries, it is still controlled by an act or a law in parliament. Uh, in still many countries, it is, it, is, it is owned by the government, not in Singapore. So, so we had this whole delivery network. Then we said, how do we utilize this delivery network to do something? I think that's the starting or starting point of this whole genesis. And if you really look, uh, I think Singapore's transformation stand started way back in 2004. Then we used to run a very simple uh, service called as VPost, which is an aggregated service. If you want to buy anything in the US, uh, typically you need to have a US credit card and a US address. So a lot of people in Singapore were not able to buy that. So we came up with a model which allowed people to buy things and ship to Singapore even though you don't have a US residential address. It's a, it's a very, very simple thing, right? So you just ship to an address in the US and then we just used to consolidate and then bring it. And then that model has, has survived for for many, many years. Now if you see, uh, we actually white labeled that services for many other postal organizations in the world, right? I mean, it's actually a very, very simple service. So I think our transformation started way back because we did realize that we were standing on a voting platform. We do know that the mail volumes are going to drop. So then how do you go and create alternate business models was the biggest uh, thinking at the time uh, and then you know, and the journey continues on. So, so why do we want to even look at drones? I think uh, you know, if you've been in Singapore long enough, uh, you would know that the importance of urban logistics which are given, given to this country. Urban logistics, smart city, which was, you know, which was highlighted before, are kind of the cornerstones of how this country will, will really change. And second thing is e-commerce. I think again, I always say, uh, you know, might be might be this term e-commerce will become redundant. I think it will become commerce because everything is going to happen <coughs> happen on on the net or on the mobile. You know, how do you ensure that things move? Okay, I mean, I think 3D printing is still, in my view, might be another 10 years it's going to take before it really takes center stage. But how do you ensure that when you buy something, you move it move it move it to the individual at the time he wants? And the third one is there is genuine concern of who's willing to do this job of moving things from place A to B. I think if you really put these three things into perspective, then we need to really go and find an alternate solution as to how we solve that problem. Because if you do not solve the problem, then you are going to, uh, you know, get into a situation where businesses are going to say, now how do how do I move things? So that's kind of the uh, kind of the uh, genesis of, of this this project. Uh, and and why did we why do we want to do this? Uh, again, as I said, drones have been there. Why do we want to do this? I think these are the these are the various, uh, uh, you know, the drive for us to do it. Right? One to ensure that you know the Singapore Smart Nation agenda is is is, is met. And again, if you see, we use the word e-commerce logistics together a lot, okay? Because we feel that e-commerce and logistics can't be separated, because you know it goes back to the ecosystem discussion. When I buy something, how do you ensure it, it gets it gets delivered? So if you really look into our our e-commerce model. We do the front end, which is really the web store. We actually do the warehouse management. We do the delivery, we do the transport, we do the returns, we do the call center, we do everything. Because if you don't create that ecosystem, what we feel is the incentive for someone to come into this is very less. Because they need to still own a portion of something. But if they have a good capability on that, then we don't have a problem. Right? So, so that's, a, that's a kind of thinking. How do you create ecosystems? Because I think it's, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, written in many, many, many articles, many papers as to how important it is to create the ecosystem, because the ecosystem cannot take too many people. Okay, if, if you're not the top three ecosystem players, then it is going to be very difficult for you, because there is no incentive for the fourth or fifth, because the one, two, three would have created so much of scale, and you would have reduced the unit cost so much, and you know, and then you just need an API to connect to those ecosystems and the problem is solved. Unless you want something very specific for yourself, and you know, that, that, that portion will always exist. So, so that's that's a key driver for us in terms of how do we how do we create an ecosystem? How do we ensure e-commerce logistics happen? And also, how do you support you know the, the nation's agenda of doing uh, you know making it smart? Okay. So this is an extremely simple slide. Right? I mean, if you are going to buy something, someone needs to deliver it to you. Okay, that's what happens in the, in a traditional postal delivery, right? So now the whole thing is how how can you change it? 
That means that means when it originates from someone, and then you know you, you pick it up. Right? So there are a lot of immediate use cases I can say. Wherever you do point-to-point you -point service, actually a drone is a no-brainer. You can replace any point-to-point -point service which exists by a drone delivery. Because I know that I need to take it from there and put it. No, don't bother about route optimization. Someone is going to pay for the service, right? It could be uh, it could be really high value. It is quite straightforward. But then when you want to do it on a mass scale, okay? Now how do you do it? Right? I, think, I think that's one of the biggest challenge which we will solve or, or which the industry will solve in the next two to three years because that becomes a, that becomes a very powerful way of doing. I mean, my, my use case always exists for this. Right? So you go to a shopping mall, you know, people say that the malls are going to change. Right? You're going to have only panels. We have got a lot of examples for this in Korea, Japan. So you go and say, look, I want to buy this. Okay, you buy this. But then the problem is that stock might be there, might not be there, right? So it's very easy, you know, fly a drone, get it there because it is point to point and I know the route. I know that you are in the mall wanting to buy it so I can always take it from a warehouse and give it. So those kind of use cases are fairly simple but to what extent it can be generalized is, is really the key. So, so what we did is we worked with, uh, uh, you know, we, we actually worked with uh, IDA uh, who's, who's, the, who's, who's also the regulator for us because as you know most of the telcos actually came from those two companies. Right? So the regulators are pretty much pretty much same in, uh, in, in most of the countries. So some pictures on that. Anyway, I've got a short video on it, so I, I, I will show that. Um, so now the whole thing is, how far are we from commercializing this? So the first thing is, in economics, right? I mean, does it work? If you, if you really see, I mean, as an individual, when you go and buy something online, the moment you see the shipping fee, you actually drop the basket. No one wants to pay for the shipping. Enough studies have made, enough research has made that the biggest deterrent for someone not to buy online is the shipping fee. Okay, so that's that's key, right? Because so if the day comes, if someone is going to pay for it, actually it's a no-brainer at all, right? I mean, these models can be easily, easily commercialized. And now, okay, the regulator, I mean, if you're going to have a lot of these going drones flying around, who's going to control it? I mean, that's a real challenge, right? Because all the aviation authorities have to step in to come up with uh, some kind of rules, some kind of regulations. How much is it going to cost? Because monitoring all those things are quite expensive. It's, it's not, it's not uh, cheap, by the way. The second one is again a very interesting. You know, we need drone flight operators. These jobs does not exist before, right? I mean, this is this is neither a car, this is neither a flight. This is something which is which is in between. So that means this, you need to create a completely new set of people who are who are capable of doing it. And then you know, this is very key. I think the world will be ruled by multidisciplinary people in the next 10 to 15 years. You cannot know just one discipline and then say that, you know, I'm going to solve this problem. So this is going to be really, you know, it's going to have autonomous vehicles coming to you, need a bit of artificial intelligence, you need a bit of how, uh, how climate works, uh, which is very interesting because when we did the trial, the biggest worry we had was what, if, what happens if there's going to be too much of wind and the drone falls in the sea. It's, it's, it's a real problem, right? So it means it really becomes monitoring of so many things we do it. And I think that the third one is, is extremely critical, right? If you really look at all of the models which we spoke, you know, Uber, Airbnb, frankly, what it requires is one long parliament to kill all these business. The regulator says no Uber. Actually, you cannot do anything about it. There is no more Uber, right? I mean, uh, Singapore is a good example, right? Because because FDA had had a provision for that for a very long time. I mean, Airbnb, Airbnb, no one knows whether it is legal or illegal here, but it happens, right? So, so, so those are kind of things. So the regulator, the regulatory, actually, today most of the technology innovations, in my view, you know, we are actually utilizing it or seeing it because the regulators are willing to accommodate and experiment. Because if they become quite tight on, oh, you should not do, I think, I think it's going to be very difficult for us to create a lot of solutions. So again, we need to see what kind of regulatory challenges and cybersecurity, right? I mean, this is going to be there for, you know, until the health exists, cybersecurity is going to be there. But now the but, but the question is, are we really worried about it? I don't know. I don't know how many of those are really worried about it. I lost my phone, uh, you, know, uh, you know, two weeks back. It's my personal phone, but still, you know, I, just, just to ensure that we have an MDM behind, you know, we just deleted it, so actually I'm, I'm not worried at all. And I just don't you know we need to get a new phone, right? I mean, credit cards, and credit, cards, credit card has been there for ages. If you lose your card, you don't panic anymore. So, so I think people's view of the cyber security is also challenging. Okay, and I think we will reach a point where we will balance between the security and, and, and the business. 
So that's that's in in short what we wanted because I've got a video which says that how the drone actually works. So to give a bit of perspective, just play the video then I just. Singpost is tapping on innovative technologies to accelerate its growth as an e-commerce logistics solutions provider in the region. Singpost and IDA Labs jointly developed a concept unmanned aerial vehicle, commonly referred to as a drone, and successfully completed a test flight for end-to-end -end secure drone mail and packet delivery. This drone technology is tailored for use in dense urban landscapes. It is energy efficient and reduces carbon footprint as they are fully battery operated and do not require petrol or refueling. We have developed a customized solution app equipped with security features and authentication functions to ensure that mail and packages are delivered to the intended recipients. Through this app, users will be able to select their preferred delivery date and time to suit their schedules. The use of the drone will significantly reduce delivery times and can potentially fulfill the last mile mail and packet delivery, allowing our postman to be redeployed to other duties, resulting in enhanced operational efficiencies and customer experience. Singpost is an e-commerce logistics provider in Asia with 22 logistics centers across 15 countries. We have a solid B2C e-commerce ecosystem that boasts a one lock in for multi-channel platforms, web-enabled try and trace feature, enhanced mail parcel sorting infrastructure, hop stations, and associated mobile applications. Singpost is well positioned to be a market leader in the region and will continue to push boundaries in its transformation drive and seek greater collaborations with industry leaders to chart new frontiers. That's a, that's a you know, very short uh, video and then of course uh, we did spend quite a bit of time before we actually uh, make this happen. And again, it's also the power of collaboration. So the gentleman whom you saw is, is, is uh, head of digital. Him and we work uh, extremely closely, right? Because he has a, he has a job of getting uh, the ideas because he needs to ensure that uh, there are enough ideas which we want to experiment, uh, you know, which we want to try it out and what can be done. And of course, my, my job becomes how do I ensure that whatever idea he has, I do at a cost which is acceptable to everyone and then make the business case viable because we all have to collaborate together. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge. And again, a uh, number of technology conferences will, will, uh, will help us in this journey. And hopefully, you know, when, when, we, when I speak next time, the drones, you can see drones flying around uh, everywhere. So, uh, thank you. Thanks very much.